Hi. Now this is a great question to do for revision on the normal distribution because it's got many features that uh, should come up in a lot of questions. So we'll take our time about explaining how we go about everything. But uh, we've got here a random variable W which represents the weight of coffee W grams in a jar. And we're told that it can be modelled as a normal distribution with a mean of 232 grams and a standard deviation of 5 grams. And you'll notice what I've got here in the first place is the parameter for the mean, 232, and the second parameter is always the variance, the square of the standard deviation. So that's why I've written the standard deviation squared, 5 squared. Obviously you could write 25 there, it's up to you. Okay, so in this question we've got to work out then the probability that the weight W is less than 224 grams. So to do questions like this, I would always encourage you to draw a sketch. And something like this, okay? A sketch of your normal distribution, in this case for the weight W. And underneath this, the standardized normal distribution Z, which has a mean of zero and it's got a variance of one. And on this diagram, we need to put on certain features. We've got to put on, say, the mean. The mean is 232, so that goes there. And where is 224? 224 is obviously going to be to the left of 232, so we'll mark it in, say, somewhere like that. 224. And that's our observed value. Normally you use little letters for observed value, so I'm going to call that little w. And what I'd want to do then is project this value, this observed value, down onto the standardized curve below. Remember, the standardized curve measures the number of standard deviations. This value here, this observed value, is above or below the mean. And you can clearly see it's below the mean here. And we'll call this little z, okay, this observed value. In fact, we'll call it z1. Now, if we're to work out the probability that w is less than 224, that's represented as this area in here, the area to the left of 224. And that's going to be exactly the same as working out that area to the left of Z1, the probability then of being less than Z1. But in the usual way, how do we get this value of Z1? Well, we should know this transformation. Z always equals the observed value, which in this case is W, minus the mean, mu, all divided by the standard deviation, sigma. It's a result that we should always learn. And in this case, our Z value is Z1, and it's going to equal our observed value, 224, okay, minus the mean, 232, all right, divided by the standard deviation. And the standard deviation, remember, was 5, the square root of the variance. Variance was 25, square root it, and you got 5 for the standard deviation. Now if you work this out, you end up with minus 1.6. We wanted it a negative number because we are 1.6 standard deviations then below the mean. That's what that value is telling us. So working out the probability that the weight is less than 224 grams is exactly the same as working out the probability that Z is less than minus 1.6 standard deviations below the mean, this value in here. Now, to do something like this, we need to eventually work towards tables. The tables that you've got, let's just bring up a copy of those tables or section, give probabilities to the left of any z value, which is to the right of zero. 
So we're not in a good position at the moment with a Z value down here, okay, a negative one. So to get around this problem, we rely on the symmetries of the graph. We can say that, let's just draw a line down here in fact, this area that we've got here, let's just sketch it up here. Okay, we've got our normal distribution for Z. Okay, so we're looking for this area down here. There's zero down through here. This is at the value minus 1.6, this area. And that probability or that area is exactly the same as working out the area by symmetry to the right of a Z value of 1.6, okay? So we can say that this is exactly the same as the probability that Z is greater than 1.6. But we still need this area here. Well, we can say that this is exactly the same as the whole area Let's just quickly sketch that in here. Excuse my drawings, okay? But there's Z minus the area to the left of 1.6. Okay, a bit small, I know, but hopefully that gives you some idea what we're doing. So we can say that this is equal to the whole area, which is 1, minus the probability that Z is less than 1.6. So now we're in a position to look up our Z value in the tables. All we need to do is take our tables, look up 1.6, you'll see it in this column under Z, it'll most probably say 1.60 though. Look down here for the equivalent value for 1.60 and you'll see that you get 0.9452. So it's this value that we want, so 0.9452. And if you do that subtraction, you end up with 0.0548. Okay, you might even want to do this to three significant figures. If you do, it's going to be 0.055 to three significant th figures, 3SF in short. Okay, so I've taken my time over this just to obviously show you the kind of ideas that are involved. And so I hope you found that uh, useful if it is a problem doing these kind of questions. And that brings us then to the end of this part of the question, all right?